In this video, I'm going to show you how to physically adjust and measure the arm lengths, aka the M665L parameter, on the Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer. Special thanks to Dennis Brown for writing the original tutorial to inspire my 3D printable caliper tool. Before starting, to my knowledge, very few people actually do this to their MPMD. If all that you're doing is printing trinkets, then you probably should not care about this. And as always, I try to put a too long didn't watch in the video description. I'll do my best to put summaries and video timestamps all in there because I know a lot of times I can be long winded. So why does this alignment matter? Lots of math, aka delta kinematics, are done to tell your printer how to move. One of the assumptions that the math makes for most firmware versions is that all arms are the same length. Arm length has a very direct impact on dimensional accuracy. It can also affect bed leveling. So who should care? One, if you have had to replace any of your arms, you should probably double check this. Two, if you are trying to improve dimensional accuracy, this is a good alignment, but you should watch my basic calibration video first. That is, I'm assuming you already know everything about M92 and the carbon paper flow chart. If not, go back and watch that video. Three, I, I guess overachievers should care, overachievers, but take note that there are many other upgrades and alignments that I think should take priority over this. Read the full calibration guide to find out. So before I jump into this, let's look at a couple of before and after images. So here's where I did the carbon paper test before and after adjusting the arm length. So you can see before I had a pretty high variance uh, for my measurements across trying to get 100 millimeters. I had a difference here from 99.75 to 100.5. That's a 0.75 millimeter difference. And afterwards I got these two towers to measure just about exactly right and then the third tower was off by only 0.35 of a millimeter so you know no variance between these two towers and then only 0.35 millimeters off between this tower and the other two I, I, I think that's pretty good result and then something else I want to point out is the heat maps if if you're familiar with that from my bed leveling tutorial so the one on the left is what I had prior to adjusting the arm lengths. You see I have a very bad, you know, stretch of blue through on the left. And on the right I still have some blue spots, but, you know, it's not nearly as bad. And if you're looking at this and wondering, well, I, I, went, I went through all this trouble and it's still not perfect. Why not? Well, I'm go going to guess that it's my bed because on this particular printer I did not install a glass plate because I just didn't want to. I decided I wanted to do wham bam directly on the surface instead and I did, did not want to lose any additional Z height ju uh, just to make it perfectly flat. I decided you know what I'll just see how good I can make the bed leveling work with just a a wham bam and maybe it'll give me an excuse to make another instructional video later on manual bed leveling but you know this is definitely a huge improvement for the heat map and so let's go back to my little intro stuff so some things you should know before getting started is that um, the main goal is to have all arms measure the same length Arms are measured from hole center to hole, cent hole center. The actual arm measurement, M665L, just needs to be close enough for software calibration to handle the rest. So if, you, if you're worried about getting the exact measurement out to two decimal places, don't. It, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I'm pretty sure by the time I was done, I just ended up using the stock value of 120.8 millimeters anyways. Um, and the arm joint holes, you know, that they're slightly larger than the M3 screws that go through them. And 
the arm joint holes are not the same diameter on both ends. It's not just a constant through hole. And the arm joint holes are not the same diameter from joint to joint or arm to arm. There's a lot of variance. And when measuring and reinstalling the arms, make sure you put the small hole side onto the screws first. And because of all these things, when we measure, we're going to take couple of measurements and find the average. So all the hardware holding the arms onto the effector are M3 so you have M3 nuts and then you have M3 lock washers and then M3 screws so for a socket you could use 5.5 millimeter in metric or 730 seconds 732 in freedom units and you can just do that though you should be able to just slide the arm off like so and then you want to do it to the rest of the arms so what I'm showing here is where I'm trying to measure the offset measurement of this tool because if you close the calipers all the way and zero it you're going to have to add some offset to your final caliper measurement number after you stick your arm over the screws in order to get the true arm measurement I ended up not really using the offset, which doesn't really matter because really you just want to make sure all arms are the same length and you can do that with the caliper tool and you can find some other way to measure the arm for M665L just to give you a good starting value before you send it through software calibration that's going to change it anyways. So before we get started adjusting arms, let's measure one to use as reference. Make sure that the holes coming out of each end are both on the, the small sides both on the top and the larger sides on the bottom because the hole is not consistently the same diameter throughout the whole sphere. So once you double check that, just want to try to slide this onto the caliper tools here. Make sure you push it all the way up against the nut and I'm just kind of putting a slight bit of pressure to make sure that it doesn't move but if I push the calipers all the way in I read about 102.35 so plus the 16 offset that's 118.35 and then if I spread it out I get 103.52 plus the 16 offset is 119.52 and so I can put that into my spreadsheet. The average is what you're going to want to keep. So now I'm going to adjust the length of one of these arms and so once again make sure that you have the small holes on the same side and then I'm just going to take these nails and I'm going to just drop them through and now what I can do is I can actually adjust the length by turning in either direction just the main thing when you start turning it make sure that you know these these still line up to where the holes are facing the same direction whenever you're done turning it so if I just turn a bit it's kind of tough but it does turn so there I've adjusted the length and the holes are still, you know, they're still fa facing to where you can rotate the spheres to get them to face whatever direction you need them to be in. What I've got here in this spreadsheet are my final results after the fact. I showed you where I was measuring the arms and adjusting them, and I just kept up with the two lengths I measured for each arm in each row of the spreadsheet so you saw where I compressed the calipers and measured and that's what this length one is so for the reference that's 102.2 that might be a different number than what I used in the example video because I went back and redid this several times but you know you can see basically the compressed number is somewhere in the ballpark of 102 point something and then the decompressed where I spread the calipers out the, that measurement is somewhere in the ballpark of 103.5 or 0.6 or whatever 
and I have the offset here to give me an idea of the arm length, but that, that doesn't really matter too much because, you know, so maybe, so yeah, maybe my actual arm length is something like that. I don't know, but the deviation is what you care about because you want all of the arms to be the same length. And so I just went through all six arms, and if the deviation was off too bad, I went and adjust the arm length up or down until it got closer. I, when I first started, some of my some of my arms were off as bad as a quarter of a millimeter, and several were also off by like maybe like 0.15 millimeters. So I definitely had room to improve. So. It makes sense that I saw the kinds of improvements that I did in my dimensional accuracy and heat map. I already showed you my before and after results at the towards the beginning of the video, so now what's next? Because clearly I still don't have perfect dimensional accuracy. Well, in order to get it any better, I'm going to have to use a special build of firmware. As of right now, that's Marlin for MPMD 1.3.3. The person who maintains that is no longer doing any updates and he's encouraged people to use a newer port of Marlin for the Monoprice Mini Delta but to my knowledge that newer port does not have the ability to adjust individual rod offsets which is what we're going to have to do here so in this special build of firmware of Marlin for MPMD 1.3.3 you're going to have to adjust your M665 A, B, C, D, E, F or maybe just some of them, maybe not. I don't know. I have not messed with this yet. I have, however, made some preparations for messing with this because I always say that in Delta Calibration everything affects everything. So if you go over here to my script page which I've covered in another video talking about fixing bed leveling. Um, I've actually created a new script semi recently so if you go into the advanced folder you'll see a readme file and a autocal generic dot python script and I've got stuff set up to where just by trial and error you can try these different Marwin for MPMD parameters until you get things going correctly. And there's some other new features in this generic script that I'll, I'll probably go over in a different video.